In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about dog walking in ServiceNow. Wait, what? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about dot walking in ServiceNow. And I'm super pumped about this video because it gives us an opportunity to begin talking about the ServiceNow database and the tables and the relationships that exist within the table. So buckle up and consider this ServiceNow Database 101 and dot walking, no dogs. <laughs> Welcome to our newly updated ServiceNow Fundamental Series. Jeff here from ServiceNow Simple, where we help you understand the ins and outs of ServiceNow with a focus on keeping things as simple as possible. Some key words to look for in this video include dot walking, relational database, sysid, primary key, foreign key, and reference fields. As always, I appreciate you being part of the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, and let's jump into it. We'll begin our discussion by reviewing our super simple ServiceNow platform overview diagram, where we learned that the three main components include the suite of applications, the development environment, and the database. When we talk about dot walking, what we're talking about is a method of working with the tables within the database, and specifically, the relationships that exist between those tables. Let me explain. ServiceNow's database is what is called a relational database. That means that the data gets stored in tables as records and fields or rows and columns, and that relationships can be created between the tables, making it super efficient and eliminating the need to store the same data in multiple places. Let's look at an example. Suppose we need to store data about three different things users, departments, and trouble tickets, and we'll call those incidents. In a relational database, we would do that by creating three different tables. In our user table, we'll create fields for storing the attributes of each user, things like their name and their user ID and their password. We'll also create one additional field that the system will use to uniquely identify the record. We'll call it the sysid, and in database lingo, it would be called our primary key. In our department table, we'll create fields for storing the attributes of each department, like the department name and the description, and it too will have a unique identifier or primary key field, the sysid. And finally, we'll create fields in our incident table to store a description of the incident, when it was created or opened, and its current status or state, and its primary key, the sysid. Awesome. And here's where the relationship fun begins. Let's say we realize through a series of highly productive but way too lengthy meetings that for each user record, we also need to store which department the user is a member of. Now we could add a bunch of attributes to our user table for storing their department information, but we've already got that stuff stored in the department table. Wouldn't it be great if we could just point each user record to a corresponding record in the department table and get the info that way. And that's the magic of a relational database. It allows us to create a field in our user table that is a reference or pointer to a record in the department table. And it works by populating the field with the sysid of the corresponding department record, essentially creating a relationship like this. This field in database lingo is called a foreign key. Let's do it again. This time, we realize that for each incident record, we need to store which user called in and reported the problem. Rather than adding a bunch of user attributes to our incident table, we'll create a reference field that points to a corresponding user record, and we'll get the info from there. And how about this one? For each department, we decide that we need to store who the manager or department head is. To do that, we can create a reference field in the department table that points back to a corresponding record in the user table. And on and on we go, creating tables that store a set of attributes without duplicating data and using relationships to build access to the data we need. So what does all of this have to do with ServiceNow and dot walking? Well, dot walking is a capability built within ServiceNow that allows us to identify and traverse these reference relationships between tables. 
to get to the data that we're after. Let's look at an example. I'll open the Application Navigator and navigate down to the Incident application and click on the All module. This opens a list view displaying all records from the incident table. To demonstrate how dot walking works, I'm going to create a new view of the list by opening the column options menu for any column, doesn't matter which one I choose, and selecting the configure item, list layout, sub item, which opens our list layout tool. I'll create a new view and name it dot walk example. The box on the left displays all the fields on the incident table that are available and the box on the right displays the fields we've selected to include in our view. I'm going to remove the selected fields except for the number field. We'll keep that one. And now I'll add the description field and the opened field and the state field and the caller field. But notice when we get to the caller field, it looks a little different. This is Service and Now's way of telling us that this field is a reference field relating to some other table. The value that gets stored here will actually be the sys ID of a record in that related table. That means we can dot walk it. And here's how. When I click on the caller field, I get a new icon added to the screen right here above the Add Remove Move Arrows. And its tooltip tells me it expands the selected reference field. I'll click it. And now, if I scroll up a bit in our Available Fields list, I can see I'm no longer seeing available fields on the Incident table. I'm now seeing available fields on the User table, which was referenced by the Incident table's Caller field. Let's add the caller's user ID. Notice over here, it's displayed as caller dot user ID. That's a dot walk from the incident table to the user table. And if we refer back to our diagram, we just walk the path of this arrow. Pretty cool. Let's keep going. I want to add the caller's department field. I'll scroll down and add that. But notice the department field on the user table is also a reference field. I'll select it and hit the expand reference button again. And now our list of available fields is populated with fields from the department table, which was referenced by the user table's department field, which was referenced by the incident table's caller field. I'll add the department head field to our report. Notice it's displayed as caller dot department dot department head. That's where the name dot walking comes from. And we just walked the path of these two arrows. And now we could continue and dot walk from the department head field back to the user table, following the path of this arrow. But I think you get the idea. I'll go ahead and save this view and then let's access it and see what we get. I'll open the list control menu, select the views item, and choose my new dot walk example view. And here's our new list view, which displays the number field, the description field, the open field, and the state field from the incident table, the caller field, and the user ID field, populated from the user table, the department field, and the department head field, populated from the department table. All made available by relationships built between the tables in the database and accessible by ServiceNow's dot walking capability. Let's look at another example, this time creating a filter. Here's the scenario. Let's build a filter to only display incident records where the caller's department name is sales. A quick check of our diagram tells us that our incident table doesn't have a field for the caller's department. We'll need to dot walk from the incident table to the user table 
via the caller field. And then from the user table to the department table via the department field. Let's do it. First, I'll open the condition builder. Next, I need to choose the field I want to build the condition on. I want the caller's department name. I'll open the choose field dropdown, which displays the list of fields on the incident table. And I'll scroll to the very bottom of the list. And I can see an item named show related fields. I'll select it. Now I'll open the list again. And as I scroll down, I can see the list looks a bit different. It's now showing me which fields are reference fields. I'll choose the item representing the caller fields reference to the user table. And I'll open the list again. Now I'll scroll the fields on the user table and select the department fields reference to the department table. Open the list again and I'll select the department table's name field. And now I'll complete my filter by choosing the is operator and entering sales as the value. And then I'll run the filter. Now we see 30 incidents. If we check our breadcrumb, it tells us we're seeing all incidents where the caller's department name equals sales. That's dot walking. One last thing I'll mention is that dot walking in ServiceNow isn't just a user interface thing. It's also available when you're writing code in the form of scripts or JavaScript. We'll learn all about scripting in ServiceNow in a future video, but as a quick example, to build a condition like the one we just created in the Condition Builder, we could write JavaScript that looks something like this. If incident.caller.department.name equals sales, then do something really cool. Incident.caller.department.name is an example of dot walking via script. In English, what this tells us is that if the caller of the current incident record belongs to the sales department, do something really cool. Don't worry about understanding all of this. Just know that when we get to where we're developing in ServiceNow with JavaScript, dot walking is available for us to use there as well. And that's it, dot walking in ServiceNow. And I would recommend everyone just get in and play a bit with dot walking. And when you do, try and remember and envision the database tables that are working behind the scenes and the relationships that exist between those tables. Dot walking is awesome from a practical perspective, but it's also a great way to begin learning and understanding how the database is working behind the scenes. So just do it. Take your dot for a walk. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.